there's a good one there. We got one hook. Oh, one hook, one hook. There you go. One hook right in the nose. She wanted that 13 fishing magic, man. Epic shad. Pretty decent bass. So the ditch run, there's a couple ditches that meet right here and there's a point of hydrilla and I cast it right to the point and that point of grass comes right up to, along, that, along the side of that ditch. And uh, this girl is sitting there waiting for that epic shad magic man by 13 fishing. Let's, uh, let's let her go and see if she's got some buddies out there. Another good one. So, uh, catching these fish on a lipless rattle or lipless crankbait, you must say. And uh, this is actually a 13 fishing magic man. And the reason why I'm throwing this lipless right here in this particular spot is it's a little bit deeper and these fish are positioned they're feeding on bait the wind's blowing some a little bit of current through these little ditches that i'm fishing and uh, they're just set up waiting for bait to swim by and that what i'm doing with this rattle trap I'm, is i'm basically yo-yoing it 99 percent of the time i'll pop my rod tip up and pop it out of that grass and uh, they'll hit it right when i let the rod go slack and when it's falling back down like i said they're basically just sitting there waiting for any type of bait to swim by and ambushing their prey. And a rattle trap is a perfect bait for the job. Nice fish on the 13 fishing magic man. Let's let her go. Sweet, let's catch another one. And so as you see, I'm letting the bank bait sink down, getting that grass where those fish are sitting and I'll kill the bait. I'll reel it fast and I'll completely kill it. Like I said, 99% of the time, they'll hit it when it's sinking back down, when you're not moving it at all. It just looks like a bait fish that's injured, sinking back down, and they'll take advantage of that and come out of that grass or come out of the ditch, wherever they're sitting to ambush their bait, and they'll come out and eat it. There he is. Gosh, another good one right on the point of grass that meets the ditch over there. I don't, I don't know if you guys could see or tell, but this, is, this one ate it the same as the other two. This one ate it, I'll pop it out of the grass and I'll let the line go completely slack, just enough to where I can feel the bait sinking back down. The best one yet, I think. Just enough to where I can still feel the bait if anything hits it. And uh, she ate it right on the fall. It's one awesome thing about these 13 fishing magic mans, they come stock with some triple grip hooks. So a lot of times they're not coming off. Another good one. Epic shad, 13 fishing magic man. I'm just trying to duplicate a shad, a bluegill, um, a shiner, anything that swims out here in these waters in Florida. And this epic shad color, it's got some gold, it's got some silvers, it's got some browns and pinks. So it imitates any type of bait fish. And these fish are loving it. Let's let her go and catch another one. There you go. So where I'm casting to, if you look over here where this big mat is, there's actually a ditch that runs from that way all the way through there. And right in the middle of that ditch is about eight foot deep. And then adding to that, there's a ditch that runs back from behind me and also from behind me over here. So there's like five different ditches that meet in this general vicinity. And then there's a really deep ditch that runs straight that way. And uh, off this point, you can see over here, there's a point of hydrilla. And the point of hydrilla is coming right up to that deep ditch. And inside the ditch is a clean area. So basically where I'm casting is right to the point of that hydrilla where those fish are gonna sit and uh, ambush the bait when it swims through. So right now I'm throwing a seven foot, nine inch, medium heavy, moderate rod. And what that allows me to do is cast really far. And uh, how I like to work this rattle trap or this lipless crankbait is I like, keep the rod tip up so 
when I'm dropping the bait back down, you'll feel, this gives you a lot more sensitivity. You'll feel that bite and you'll be able to lean sideways and put the hook in those fish. Um, oh, there's one right there. Oh gosh, what is this? Ooh, that's a little guy, he's just hooked funny. As you can see, I had the, had the rod tip up and I felt him bite it. And I was able to just lean sideways and drive the hook in that fish. That's why I like that long rod, especially if you get a bite way out there, you're able to reel down to him and clear up a lot of line a lot faster than if you're using a shorter, shorter rod. Pretty cool, decent fish. Let him go, Let's see if we can get another one. So to pair up with a long rod, I don't like to throw a super fast retrieve reel because you don't want to move that bait too much off the bottom. So right now I'm just throwing a seven zero to one. This actually happens to be a 13 fishing inception, which is a cheaper base reel. You don't need anything crazy expensive to do this type of stuff. Um, I'm throwing 20 pound fluorocarbon because like I said, I'm throwing up there near some grass. So you never know if you hook a big 10 pound plus fish and it takes you into that grass. You don't want to be throwing anything too light where it gets in there and breaks you off. So. That's what I'm throwing today and it seems to be working. So the main thing you want when you're throwing a lipless bait or even a chatter bait for that matter, is you want a good tip. And as you can see, this tip is just gonna load up when them fish heat it. So say I get a bite, you, you can see how the rod tip kind of just bounces and then you lean into them and you got the rod, it's a, it's a moderate action rod, so the rod's gonna bend a good amount and you're gonna be able to put those treble hooks right in that fish's mouth. Um, Another good reason I like a long rod, um, well one, I'm throwing a three quarter ounce rattle trap. So when you cast really far out there, say you get some grass on it, it's, it's always a pain in the butt to get it up out of that grass with a short rod. You're gonna sit here and jerk all day and it's never gonna come out. I can clear it with one, one jerk of the rod, it's gonna come out of that grass and back into where the fish are sitting. So there's three big advantages as to why I throw this big long rod. Um, number one is a long cast. I want to cover as much water as possible. And uh, with this long rod that I'm using, like this 7.9, I, I would say anywhere from a 7.6 to a 7.9 is your perfect range when you're throwing a heavy bait, covering a lot of water. Um, so that's number one, making long casts and just covering as much water as possible. Um, number two is clearing that bait of grass. Say you make a long cast out there and like, as soon as you go up the reel, it's got grass on it. With a long rod, you're able to pop it one time get that bait up out of the grass and you're not going to sit here and struggle all day jerking it and it's just never going to come loose with a rod that's too short and doesn't have enough power. Number three is just if you don't have enough rod to just pick up a bunch of line and lean into them way out there, a lot of times you're not going to drive that hook where it needs to be in those fish's mouth and you're going to end up losing them just because they're so far out there and uh, that's why I like this long rod like I am using today. All right guys, so we worked these fish over and uh, haven't got any more bites in a little bit. So I wanted to take a minute and idle over this spot we were fishing and kind of show you what I was aiming at. So as you guys can see here, it's about five foot where my boat is now, but in just a second, you'll see it drop down into this ditch. Right about here. And there you go, there's that deeper ditch, and that's where those fish are gonna sit and ambush that bait. And then here it's gonna come up again, and there's gonna be some grass on top of it, and that's right where, that's right where those fish were sitting. As you can see over here on my side scan, that's that point, you see the grass comes out off that point, that's where those, I was aiming towards the point, and right where the point of the grass meets that ditch back there is where those fish were sitting. And here's another big ditch, there's just a bunch of ditches that collide right there and it's just a good ambush point for those fish to set up on and feed up on bait. So another, another reason those fish were set up on that area where I just caught a couple is because we just had a good sized front that came through the last couple nights and the weather got down, the temperature got down into the 40s last night so it was a little bit chilly. So all out here in this big expansive area is a big spawning flat with hydrilla and cattails and things like that so those fish basically what they do is they'll pull off that flat and get into those ditches and they'll feed up and wait for this cold weather to pass and basically they'll just pull right up out of that ditch go up onto these flats and go back to spawning 